as an atheist, how do you distinguish between illusion and reality as both are related to our brain? Well, illusions usually are not uh, consistent. So this is called reality testing. We try to see, can you replicate what you have uh that's See. a great answer, Susie. Yeah. Can you can you replicate what you experienced? But here's the thing. Our brains can replicate false things. So what do you do? You can verify with some other people. Are you also observing this? Collectively, do we observe this together? You know? Um, yeah. Also, yeah, it's whether... It, there, there are certain things about objective reality that is, um, that is some of the attributes of objective reality, um, are that it's repeatable, it's consistent. The models that you that you build based on objective reality is not contradictory, um, and um, the models that you build based on objective reality has predictive power, right? You know this to be true about objective reality, but it is possible for an illusion to have all those attributes and still be an illusion. It's very unlikely, right? Um, but if an illusion has all of those attributes, then it's indistinguishable from reality. And for practical reasons, you might as well treat it as objective reality. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> That was a very profound answer. If you if you could recognize it, if you know the hikmah in what I just said, your mind has been blown. Do you see the hikmah? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. Cool. Oh yeah, Nico is saying there's no final test if it's an illusion, but everything is only an illusion can't be falsified. The, again, um, most so it's is is easy to prove something is okay so if anything is not repeatable um it's self-contradictory we know for it to be an illusion right but that but it's possible for an illusion to have all the attributes mm -hmm. that make that is impossible that that also objective reality has it's, it's possible for an illusion to be like that but again who gives a crap if an illusion has all the attributes of objective reality then for practical reasons for us we could treat it as objective reality right so it doesn't really matter anymore if it's an illusion or not okay do we have more questions no we don't we could end this oh here we have another question as an atheist i feel stress 80 percent of my time because i have to pretend that i'm a muslim and work how can uh, find a way to reduce the pressure. God damn. It's hard for me to give this advice to you because I'm speaking from you from a position of privilege where I don't have to do that. So, mm -hmm. so, and again, I when I lived in Iran, what I did is not advisable because when I lived in Iran under an Islamic theocracy, I didn't pretend to be a Muslim and I was too outspoken i mean i was a teen i was going through a rebellious phase of being a mm -hmm. teen in trouble and i think i i was lucky enough for for me to leave before it being that outspoken about my atheism got me into trouble right so what i did was i didn't pretend to be a muslim um and that is not i don't advise that no no, no. People do not do what i was what i was doing so i'm I, I i'm not in a position to give any good advice right now um well hmm. you find community yes you know there are lots of people like you who can't talk about what you deal with in their openly in their in their public life you know so you can find online communities like ours. Yes. Where you can. Yes, but Delhi has found um, our community. I think she wants it to be more active. And I think she's helping with that. So that's great. So thank you, Delhi, with that. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, we really need that. So, and I also think like some people think like, it's not the same, you know, as like being able to openly be yourself. 
I mean, you can't. One thing I suggest, again, I know that this might not, again, take this with a grain of salt. Do not make decisions unless you talk to more people. And again, this probably will pass as financial advice. And I have to give you the disclaimer that I am not a financial expert or an expert in giving career advice. Uh, so be skeptical about what I'm saying and do more research before you do anything like this. But try to get online jobs. Try to develop skills that you could sell online on, on websites like Fiverr or Upwork um, so that you don't have to go to work like your, your job. And, and, and even if you manage to get away from where you are right now, your job is not tied to a location that as long as you have a laptop and an internet connection, you could make money. Um, I think a lot of ex-Muslims need, you know, that's a really good career path for a lot of ex-Muslims to not have to rely on their parents or on a job that requires you to pretend where, who you are, like you're just selling your skills online. Um, and there's it's there's a lot of YouTube, like when it comes to skills, you can learn accounting. Um, and th these are, you can learn these by just consuming free YouTube videos. You don't even have to pay for courses. There's enough free YouTube videos. You can learn animation, you can learn uh, drawing, you can learn uh, social media skills. Translating. Translating, oh my god, yeah. That's lucrative, English. especially That's, like Arabic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Arabic, or, English um, to Arabic, Arabic to English. Transcribing. Or, yeah. yeah, transcribing. Like, yeah, I'll yeah. transcribe your meeting minutes. Just give a yeah. written list of what, everything that was said, especially in um, languages like Arabic. Yeah, and learn how to uh, also like uh, uh, learn how to learn new skills fast, but also learn how to sell them. Right, not don't just learn the skills, right? So, for example, let's say you want to do animation. Maybe you watch a whole bunch of videos on how to do animation, but then you also learn. Um, there's also a bunch of YouTube videos on how to sell my scales on Fiverr or on Upwork or on some other platforms, right? So there's also courses not just on how to get the scale, but also how to sell your skill. So that's my advice. But again, do your own research. Also, learn like web development or coding. Mm. This is a high barrier. Okay, maybe if you're passionate. Yeah, if you're passionate about that, right? But I'm telling you, like, there's so many skills that you don't need, like, years of learning to become good and you can sell, sell it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you speak English and Arabic, you already <laughs> you could already start doing selling translation, you know? Um, and you can get already. Yeah, you could get better at it. Yeah, anyways, yeah. But, yeah, um... Also, learn how to learn fast, okay? Because whatever you're selling that is useful today might not be useful tomorrow. So the best skill to learn is the skill of learning in the shortest amount of time, right? Competitive so, in the marketplace. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Dolly. Saying it's overwhelming because work environment is bad, homophobic, and misogynist. Yeah, try to get financial independence like that so that you don't have to deal with people. You choose the people you have to deal with instead of them having to choose it for you. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Kali, you know, like me, then that means that you probably want more Blasphemous art. Well, I have good news for you. If you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below, then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest Blasphemous art available today. So if you want some of this delicious blasphemy, and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free, all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below. Uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook. That's blasphemousart.com slash ebook. Sign up with your email and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy. What could be better? So make sure you sign up, link below.